So we're going to go through a lot of all this stuff that we found and explain each individual item one by one, as well as how it is that we clean and maintain the stuff after it is that we found it. So the first and most interesting item is this one here. This is actually a silver spoon and it was from the Grand Adelphi Hotel in Perth, which was built in 1935 and was built by one of the guys that was in the mining community, the gold mining community, and he was also a hotelier. His name was Gordon Dunleith and he built a grand hotel, which was one of the most exotic at the time. And that's where this spoon came from. It was a silver spoon of the time, quite a fancy looking spoon. And uh, we found that just locally uh, in the last couple of weeks. Here's another one of the other really awesome finds. Uh, this one here is a florin, which is mostly silver. In 1947, they used half silver and half other metals, but before 1945, uh, they were pure silver. Uh, this one here is in fantastic condition, as you can see. And you're probably wondering, what is this hexagonal looking coin? It doesn't look like an Australian one. Well, actually it's not. It's actually from England. And this one here is 20 pence. Uh, this was made in 1982 and we found this out digging. That was pretty cool to see something from England over in Australia here. Uh, one of the modern day coins, a tourist has probably dropped that somewhere uh, along their travel path. And the other night we pulled up this massive silver ring. Look at the size of that. This is real heavy. It must be 925 and it's got some knurling in there. It's in pretty good condition. We ha didn't clean it much. It sort of, sort of came out like that, but uh, that was a really good find. Always great to find jewellery uh, out in the parks. This one here is quite an interesting one. British Airways uh, would have been from one of the luggage or the VIP keys or something of a British Airways passenger. Uh, it's not gold, but it's uh, some sort of plating, um, but that was a pretty cool find. We found that up near the airport, one of the parks near the airport. And this one here is just a $1 coin, uh, one of the commemorative ones from 2005, uh, just a modern coin. Nothing too special there, but we usually find about 20 or 30 of those a night uh, in amongst our group. This one here was probably one of the best finds in the last couple of months. This is pure silver and it's got a ruby in there as well. And you can see that it's got diamonds in the side. Um, this was an absolutely fantastic find. Uh, it was uh, probably one of the ideal finds uh, that you'd like to find every time you go out. Um, yeah, look at that, that's in perfect condition. We didn't have to clean that one up much, uh, being silver, that they pretty much come out of the ground like that. And uh, yeah, that's a fantastic find. Here's another ring that we found. Um, this one here is just a dress ring, nothing fancy. Uh, be great if that was a diamond in there, we'd all be retired, but uh, <laughs> it's just a dress ring, uh, but it's great to find rings nonetheless uh, in any shape or size. Uh, it means that your metal detector is doing the right thing and you're able to detect the right sort of numbers when you're digging them up. This one here usually picks up around about 74, 75, 76 on the Quest metal detectors. That's usually the range for uh, these sort of rings on the Quest series of metal detector. And this one here is just a big pendant, uh, maybe a brooch or something that they would have worn on their jacket. Um, could have even been a big ring or a earring or something like that. Uh, something's broken off the back here, but uh, that looks like it's just a dress ring with uh, some sort of simulated pearl uh, on the inside there. It's quite big as you can see by the scale. Um, yeah, that's another fantastic find. That one rung up 76, 77 on the Quest metal detector. And here's another huge bit of jewellery. Look at the size of this thing. Um, this was a fantastic find. Uh, this one here rung up at 86 on the Quest metal detector and you always get excited when you see 86 on there because it's usually a big chunk of jewellery like this or some sort of silver or uh, one of the big pennies uh, or even possibly a half penny depending on uh, whether it's the pre-decimal uh, before 40s uh, where they were sometimes made out of a mixture of metals maybe bronze but anyway this one here this is a huge pendant uh, it's some sort of silver dress pendant probably would have had a necklace to go with it and uh, we couldn't find the necklace but uh, we we're happy to find uh, the main part which is this here um, be great if we can find one of those every time we go out um, yeah so that's uh, one of the great finds of the last three months and this one here is just a 50 cent coin. Um, nothing too special about it other than it's one of the Olympic series. And this was in 2005. 
and uh, whenever you get one with uh, any sort of Olympics or uh, special symbols um, as with something like this one here, uh, this one here was the Commonwealth Games, uh, it's recommended to keep those and tuck them away because uh, in time these will be sought after by collectors as uh, they become scarcer and uh, this one here uh, is 1982, uh, quite an old one now so um, yeah definitely worth keeping. And here you see we found another gold ring, um, nothing too crazy here. This one is plated gold um, and a lot of the platings actually come off. Uh, we gave this one a little bit of a clean and uh, in the cleaning process a bit of the gold came off so this was pretty much gone but uh, a ring nonetheless. Uh, this one rung up 74, 75, 76 and uh, that's usually the signal for a ring on the Quest metal detector. That was the Pro series, but it rings up the same on the uh, X5, X10, Q40, Q20 series. And here's another ring that we found, another dress ring. Uh, in fact, I think this came off of the bigger pendant that we showed you a little bit earlier, that one there. Uh, that looks like the backing off of it. Um, it looks like it's snapped off, but um, yeah, it's just some sort of dress ring material. And here, this one here is a silver love heart pendant, uh, another great find in the last couple of weeks. Uh, it could be pure silver, it may not be, but uh, judging by the little bit of corrosion there, it might be just plated silver, but a uh, fantastic find nonetheless. And this one here we found just the other night. This is most likely plated or even pure gold. Um, it's just some sort of pendant that's worn around a necklace or bracelet or something like that. But uh, yeah, that's a fantastic find. Uh, we're yet to test that and find out if it's real gold or not. And this one was a pretty cool one, a gold plated koala, uh, some sort of brooch or something that someone's worn uh, for some special event, Australian uh, commemorative event. Um, that was a really cool find. Uh, it's most likely just plated gold or uh, some sort of dipped uh, covering on it. And this one here is a 1948 six pence. Uh, we found this just the other night and we've been finding a lot of these recently with the Quest metal detector series. Uh, they usually ring up around about 80 in the 80s or uh, sometimes even around the 70s depending on whether they're sitting on the side or sitting flat. If they're sitting flat you'll usually get 77, 78 on the reading and sometimes 82, 84 depending on uh, what angle it's sitting on. Um, always fantastic to find those. That's a 48 but if they're before 45 uh, then they're pure silver so this one's 50% silver. And there's another little ring that we found, uh, nothing too special there. It's quite old, um, as you can see by the corrosion and uh, the knurling on there. It's a very basic design, but uh, we found that in a park that was nearly 100 years old. So this one here is probably maybe 60 to 80 years old. It's hard to tell uh, without any markings or stampings. And here we go. This one here is an Australian Rue Penny. Uh, fantastic to find these. This is a 1950. Um, so this is after the Commonwealth ones. The Commonwealth are before th the 40s and uh, they come in from England, a lot of them. Uh, these ones here, they're actually printed in Australia, the Rue Penny. And this one here is a 1921 Australian Commonwealth Penny in absolutely fantastic condition. We found that uh, around about three months ago. And uh, this one here was printed in either Melbourne or Sydney. And uh, that one's in fantastic condition. That's King George V and a fantastic find, one of the best finds that we found in the last three months of metal detecting. Absolute beauty, that one there. So you're probably wondering what's the go with a lot of these other coins that we've got scattered around here. And what we're going to show you is what we do to clean them up. After you found them, you want to be able to clean them up and preserve them uh, because you want to put these away for safekeeping that one day you can sell them or show them to your grandkids or whatever it is that you do with your collections. So with the cleaning process, we wanted to explain why it's important to use the right process to preserve them, because otherwise you'll end up with coins like this one here. See here, you've got all this green corrosion and that's a copper coin and they go very green and corroded. If you don't clean them and preserve them properly, see how we've preserved it really well on this side. But on this side, it's got some water on it and that's what happens. So with cleaning copper coins especially, we recommend not to use any water at all at any part of the cleaning process because you'll end up with corrosion like that, especially if you use salt and water and vinegar like a lot of people recommend. Um, if you find out what happens after three or four months and you go back and have a look at them, you'll see that they all turned out like that. Whereas with the process that we're using, um, they end up like this. So uh, that's a really good example of what happens if you don't clean them correctly. 
So that one there has been cleaned and the water's gotten onto the back of it and that's why it's ended up like that. But uh, on this side here, we use vinegar and then wash it off and dry it with vinegar. And then after that, once it's all dried for about two or three minutes, then you put extra virgin olive oil on it, the light one, so it doesn't have any heavy oil to it or impurities. It's just basically a light oil and you coat it and then you put it into one of these Ziploc packets like what we've done with this one. See how bright and shiny that one there is. We washed this one here around about two or three months ago and you can see that it's still perfect. Um, it's kept the air out of it like that and the oil has preserved it and we haven't used any water at all in this cleaning process. We recommend not to use any water at all because uh, otherwise they end up getting the green corrosion on them. So this one here is one of the pennies that we showed you earlier. This is the Australian Rue penny and uh, we've cleaned this up using the same process. We've just put it in vinegar to clean off the dirt and brighten it up a little bit and sometimes you can use a toothbrush just to scrub off any sort of debris and sand or anything that's stuck to it. Not a hard toothbrush, just a soft toothbrush. And then uh, once you've rinsed it back into the vinegar and dried it off with a cloth, like a tablecloth, uh, not paper towels, because paper towels end up leaving fibres everywhere and make a mess. Um, so this one was just cleaned up with vinegar and then a tablecloth to dry it off. And then once it's been dry for around about two or three minutes, uh, you then coat it in extra light olive oil and it's a really fine olive oil. It doesn't have a lot of impurities and it's not heavy and it'll end up giving you that sort of finish on your coin, which is near to perfect. Here's another really great 1945 Rue Penny that we recently cleaned up. And you can see on this side, it's still got the olive oil, uh, which is very recent. And it will, will stay shiny like that for a little while. Uh, give it a couple of weeks and then it'll dull down a little bit. But the olive oil protects it from getting that green corrosion going on. And it's a very good way to preserve your coins. Some people say that you don't really want to clean your coins, but if you leave them dirty, it can actually cause them to corrode and rust. Um, and if you want to preserve them, you really should uh, put some sort of oil coating on them and then put them in one of those Ziploc bags, as with what you see here. These Ziploc bags are really essential to stopping any further air and corrosion and all sorts of deterioration of the coin. With these silver ones, these are actually quite easy to clean because silver is a lot more forgiving than copper. Silver preserves itself really well and uh, you can use lemon juice to get these ones cleaned up. Uh, a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of a, tooth br a toothbrush, a little sc a scrubbing brush, nothing too harsh and it'll, they'll come up like that nearly every time so long as they haven't been too badly damaged or corroded uh, in the soil. But um, that one there is an absolute beauty, 1947 florin, one of the favourite finds of the last month or two. And here's another fantastic find of the last three months. Uh, this one's here is a big R type of emblem, uh, maybe some sort of logo or badge or some sort of uh, brooch, um, but it's got some diamond looking things in there. They'd probably all be fake, of course, but um, that was a really big find. I mean, look at the size of that there. Um, that's a fantastic find. Uh, that one there rung up 76 on the Quest Pro metal detector. Um, the Quest Pro just finds so much jewellery, they're absolutely fantastic. So as we're getting into telling you about the cleaning process for copper and silver coins, um, you can see here that this one here is actually a florin. It's a 1947 florin, uh, very much the same as the other one there. But this one here hasn't been cleaned yet and this is how they come out of the ground. It's not terrible but they usually have some sort of coating on them so you'll find out uh, how that comes up. Uh, in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, we should be able to get that one looking really fantastic, uh, just like the other one there. It should really shine with the silver uh, coating going on there. So this one here is an Australian Rue Penny. And as you can see, it's really crusty and corroded. And that's usually how they come out of the ground. So the ones that we've shown you before are the cleaned ones. Um, these ones here are the dirty ones and you can see that, yeah, they look pretty grubby. So if you just stored them away like that, they're not going to keep very well. So you really want to clean them up. In our opinion, some people say don't clean them, but we think it's better to clean them up and then preserve them, put them in the Ziploc bags. And then that way you'll preserve them and you'll get better value for them in future. And it's great when you 
present them to your family, your friends and your grandkids. You can show them how they look in their best shape um, rather than uh, being coated with a whole pile of sand like you see with this one here. Rightio guys, so you can see that we've cleaned up the table a little bit here and changed the setting. So this here, what you see is this one here is a container of vinegar and one and two cent coins. This one here is a container of full pennies and half pennies. And here is just some of the other finds that we found in the last dig, uh, as we showed you before with the R emblem there. Um, so yeah, these are like just one and two dollar coins. Uh, we found the florin there, silver florin. Uh, that one there's another penny and heaps of one and two cents. Um, we also found this thing here, which looks like it's pure gold, um, some sort of pendant uh, with the Mother Teresa on it or something. Anyway, that one there looks like it's pure gold. And we've got a couple of other jewelry items here that we found as well. So yeah, another fantastic dig. So we're going to show you the cleaning process, uh, what we're doing here. Uh, that one there's been soaking for around about half a day, uh, same with this one here. So when you get the pennies, um, they usually look all crusty, um, as with what we showed uh, in the previous video. And uh, we just leave them soaking in the vinegar there. No salt, no other chemicals, just vinegar, and especially no water, because if you use water on them, they end up corroding. Uh, the silver are a lot more resilient when it comes to water, but uh, copper and water, they just go green virtually straight away. So we recommend not to use any water at all uh, in any part of the cleaning process, whether you're rinsing them or scrubbing them or cleaning them, just keep them well away from water and dry them off thoroughly. Uh, before doing anything and then um, use oil to coat them to preserve them. The one and two dollar coins, the modern ones, uh, you don't really have to do anything at all with them because you're going to end up spending them. So uh, just wash them up and uh, yeah, put them into your pocket change and uh, use them up wherever you need to. Now before we go on about this, uh, a lot of people will say that their methods are better than what this is. Uh, yeah, we're not really in a uh, battle of whose method is better. Uh, we're just showing you what we use and what's been effective for us. Some people will say to use salt and water and soda and uh, lime juice and uh, vinegar and all sorts of other chemicals. But in our experience, whenever you use anything else other than vinegar and drying it off, uh, as soon as you introduce water or lemon or any other corrosive uh, salt, uh, that they just end up corroding, especially the copper. Um, the silver are a lot more forgiving, but uh, copper, if you use water on them, they just rust and corrode and go green uh, in around about two or three months. So here you can see this is just regular white vinegar, nothing too fancy. So we put the coins into vinegar and let them soak for either 15 minutes or half a day, depending on how grubby they are. And then once you've wiped and dried them off with a tea towel, you coat them in olive oil and uh, that'll preserve them. Uh, you can use a little bit of a scrubbing toothbrush uh, to get the debris off if they're a little bit grubbier. Uh, but if it doesn't need it, then you don't need the brush. But uh, that's the best method that we've found. So in a moment here, we're going to pull some of these coins out that have been soaking for a while. And then we're going to show you how great they come up just with a little scrub and then just drying them off a little bit and how well they come up from doing that. All right, so these are some of the two cents that have been soaking. So we're just going to pull one of them out. Dry that off a little bit. And with this toothbrush, just dip it into the vinegar there and just give it a little bit of a scrub and look at how bright that comes up just with the faintest amount of pressure 
look how bright that's come up already just flip that over dip that into the vinegar again and just give that another scrub like that and look how bright that's come up so um, that's pretty much clean like you don't really need to do anything so you dry that off with a tea towel as thoroughly as what you possibly can and then you would coat it in the extra light olive oil so we'll show you that in a second now so now we've just got some oil here the extra light olive oil and you just get the coin after you've dried it off with the tea towel and you just give it a very light coating like that and then you'd leave it for maybe a day or two just sitting on a tablecloth like this um, just leave it for a day or two just let the oil soak in there and let it dry off a little bit and then after that you'd put it into a plastic bag to preserve it so um, in our opinion that's the best way to preserve them we know that other people have got other ways of doing it but uh, that's the method that we find that works really well for us so if we assume that that coin has been sitting around for a couple of days now you just get one of these ziplock bags pop the coin into the ziplock bag like that and then seal it over and that will preserve your coin for many years to come check up on them occasionally to see how they're going if they're getting a bit of green then repeat the process you may have had a bit of moisture on your hands or in the air and you may want to clean them again and recoat them in oil again uh, just to preserve them so we've cleaned up the two cent coin as you see there and now we're going to clean up one of these half pennies that we found the other day that one there's been soaking for a while and uh, as you can see it's still pretty crusty up until the point at which you give it a bit of a scrub with the toothbrush so we're just going to dip the toothbrush into the vinegar there there's no salt in there just vinegar and you give that a bit of a scrub like that turn it over dip that into the vinegar again come back and just give that a bit of a scrub again and as you can see it doesn't take much scrubbing at all to make that come up really bright these will dull down in time so you know it's not going to stay like that it's just you know whilst it's being cleaned it's going to be like that and then it'll settle back down to some sort of natural color some say that you shouldn't clean your coins at all but if you're like us and you like to clean your coins uh, then this is the method that we use and uh, we find it very effective so after this you dry it off with a tea towel not a paper towel because the paper towels tend to fall apart and leave fibers all over it so you dry it off with a tea towel and then coat it with the extra virgin light olive oil and uh, that'll preserve it for many years to come especially if you put it in the ziplock bag uh, like you see with this one here so that's our video guys hope you really enjoyed it uh, please click the like and subscribe and the bell notification and we'll show you some more videos when they come through uh, we do a lot of metal detecting and we find a lot of cool stuff and also many ways to help with your metal detecting like finding the best parks and finding where you find all the pre-decimals and the jewelry um, so yeah check back from time to time and see our other videos uh, it's sure to help you improve your metal detecting and uh, be able to preserve your coin finds yeah thanks very much for watching the video and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time